Boom, we're live. All right. Well, hello, everyone, and happy Monday. Uh, we hope everybody had a wonderful Father's Day weekend. Oh, yeah. We know we did, and happy Father's Day to all of our Live Good Dads out there, dads to be. Um, so today we're going to talk about something that's near and dear to me, sleep. Should be near and dear to everybody, but um, I personally have to work on my sleep. I'm not one that just can hit the pillow and fall asleep. Like That's me. Usually Ryan can. That's me, and yep. Sometimes, if you're in my shoes, it gets frustrating when you're lying next to someone. You can tell they just fell asleep, and you're sitting there, you know, counting your sheep. Um, so we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna discuss uh, the strategies that we use personally um, to help us fall asleep, and then also tie in our supplements. So first off, sleep should be the foundation of health, and all of our pillars of health fall underneath sleep, or maybe on it, or on it. Okay, that they stand on. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> so if we're not sleeping properly, guys, everything um, gets out of whack. Uh, mm -hmm. if you're, most people are actually 50 to 70 million in the U S struggle or have sleep disorders. Okay. One in three, uh, do not get actually get six or less hours of sleep. So do not get the recommended seven to nine hours of sleep. Okay. One in three, it's a really big deal. Yeah. Well, these are high numbers right. and think of all the health conditions that can follow along with lack of sleep. Oh yeah. Well, the, I mean, so sleep deprivation and this is a really big topic. And I think there's a lot of cultural aspects that play into this too. But like sleep deprivation is probably the largest, most the largest risk factor for chronic disease. We're seeing a nonlinear growth and acceleration of chronic disease, right? We're also seeing a nonlinear growth of uh, sleep deprivation. So I think the study showed like 1942, roughly back in the 40s, average sleep per night was 7.9 hours, eight hours. Recently, yeah, recently it's down to 6.5. And then we're going to talk a little bit about why that's so important that we need to address those things. But I mean, chronic disease, I mean, that's, I would, I would start there. I would think about, okay, what's the easiest life hack biological demand needed thing that we can do that we can control to improve our quality of health. And I would put it right there. I'd say sleep is absolutely number one. Yeah. I yeah. mean, lack of sleep can, you know, put you at risk for heart disease, um, heart attack, heart failure, oh, diabetes, Alzheimer's is a blood big pressure. One. Big Stroke, one for cognitive decline. Depression. Yeah, Think about how you how you feel when you mm -hmm. don't, you know, get enough sleep. And it's actually, a, um, I was reading a study that if you get less than six hours of sleep a night, you are 30% chance um, likely, likelier to be obese. Oh, wow. I mean, that's a big deal. And good. it has to do with, you know, our hunger hormones um, mm -hmm. that get dysregulated when we don't get enough sleep. Yeah. So it's a really big deal. And that, but you're just saying hormones, like so. Then why is sleep so important, right? Are we going to? I don't know if we're going to go into that, but you know, it's like when that body goes into rest. I mean, we're taking out the trash. Sure. We're making. We're coming in those 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 events from the day prior into memories. We're literally like hitting the save button on the work that we had just performed from the day prior. I mean, your body now. They actually recently identified that this, the brain has a clean, like a sewage system, similar to like our lymphatic system in our body. And the glial cells in the brain at night, when when resting and sleeping, they actually shrink. And there's a wave. It's like they're taking out the trash. You're cleaning out the junk from the day. And the neurons and everything that making new connections are committing to things in memory. And they're setting up the brain for the day to, of learning to come ahead. It's an incredible discovery, though, this, this concept of a sewage system in the brain to wash out the trash. Right. Yeah. But And what's happening, too? You said hormones, proteins are all being, are, you know, um, manufactured. You know, obviously, we're seeing a lot of biochemical reactions while we're sleeping. And the sleep scientists are starting to get a better understanding of it. It's still a giant mystery. I and mean, we spend a third of our lives, right, if you're doing eight out of 24 hours, a third of our lives asleep. And... Um, you know, and unfortunately, it seems to be that most people aren't really putting that as a high of a priority as it probably should be. A couple of quick things that are of note, like the Guinness Book of World Records ban, they won't even allow people to, to try to, to try to achieve sleep deprivation right, records, right? It's just too dangerous. Um, in rats, when uh, sleep deprivation, you'd have, they died 20% faster than starvation. Like, and there's a lot of studies that they've used uh, lab rats for, and it's uh, it's quite unbelievable actually when you start looking into the into the studies that have been done. I mean, it's very conclusive. It's without a doubt. Right. So, which just shows you that we really need to make this a priority in our lives. Yeah, you need to shut your body down earlier. You know, if you're working up right until the last minute, yeah. um, or you know, you take phones in in the bed with you. You know, anything that can disrupt. We really have to focus on falling asleep and staying asleep. 
Um, I think that's a good time to say that we're, let's take our approach today to a practical uh, okay. application. Instead of going into sleep cycles, um, brain wave, the different waves, the sleep science, and, and all the different things to do with like the sleep science, I think we should go into a more of a practical approach. Of, you know, look, we are, we are no authority in the space of sleep, right? We're not sleep scientists. But from a practical perspective, we invest a lot of time and energy and actually money into getting a good night's rest. So I think that's a good way to look at today's yep. sort of Zoom is to make sure that we cover the things that work for us. And at the end of this, I just hope that you guys can take home something that might improve your sleep or loved ones. For sure. Um, a few things that are, that are you know, a little bit of common knowledge that to avoid um, prior to sleep. So first of all, caffeine. We know that it's going to disrupt our sleep. Um, Ryan is extra sensitive to caffeine, so, so he knows he has to cut himself off a little bit earlier in the day. But, way earlier. Right. Usually a good rule of thumb is, you know, 2 p.m. Don't have any caffeine after Oof, 2 p.m. That's tough. Because, I personally do noon. Yeah. And then you're sometimes... So, like, let's look at caffeine, though, because that's such a prevalent, like sleep disturbing chemical, right? That we use for, it has a half-life of four to five hours, right? I know I'm a slow, I'm a poor metabolizer of caffeine. I have my genetic test done to show my pharmacokinetics or uh, pharmacogenomics. And I know I'm a poor metabolizer. And if you, if you say an average first, first, um, whatever pass um, metabolism is 3.3 hour, 3.3 half-lives, that's 12 hours to eliminate caffeine out of my system. Right at four hours half life, so yeah, it's a big deal. At two o'clock, I would be ruined. I have to stop by eight a.m. I'm not even sure. Yeah, it's and I'm sure you've heard this before because I will tell you, my both my parents say this, and I get on them all the time. But they say, well, I can have a coffee after dinner, and I can still fall right asleep. That's great. You might be able to fall asleep, but mm -hmm. you got your quality of sleep sure. is going to go way down in the dumps. Not going to be good. Not healthy. Mm -hmm. Um, so really watch your caffeine, um, alcohol intake. I'm sure you even notice it if you have a couple drinks. That that night is just your your sleep quality it's isn't as good. REM. Ruins the REM. Ruins the REM. Yeah, and everything, everything is a little thrown off. Well, um, yeah. You want to exercise regularly, but not too close to bedtime mm -hmm. because uh, the whole you know body type, heart rate up basically can can throw that off. Um, you want to get outside during the day, get some sunlight, get that vitamin D, which we're going to tie into that as well. Okay. And really establish a good nighttime routine, which is where I can go ahead and tell you um, my. My routine, well, a few other things to avoid though, sorry, water or drinking anything leading up to bed. Like try to cut yourself off at dinner time. Uh, the older we get, the more likely we are to wake up at least one time a night to use the restroom. That's that's normal. If you're getting up two, three, four times a night, that's that's not good, okay? That's a sign that either you're drinking too much close, you know, late in the day or close to bed, or it could be a signal for another health condition. So be aware of that. Um, I like to just kind of cut myself off at dinner, maybe have little small sips to, um, with the palate. Okay, so what do we do? Temperature wise, you want your room cold. Um, I'm a very hot sleeper. Um, so 60 degrees or below, okay? no warmer. Um, I also use something called a chili pad, which goes under just my side of the bed, and I can regulate my own temperature on my side. And I usually drop that down to 63 degrees. It makes a huge difference in my sleep, big difference. Um, I use a weighted blanket. I got Ryan one too. My daughter, one of my daughters has one really helps that that um that pressure helps your body relax so um super cheap get away to blanket on amazon um i wear an eye mask because you want to i mean the little lights that come from your alarm clock or just uh, street lights street lights landscape lighting, around, lighting. it sure. really affects your sleep so a simple sleep mask and then i also use earplugs um it just helps me uh, a little bit of a meditative where i can hear my own breath but it also blocks out any of the noise that I might hear from Ryan in the bedroom or maybe the dogs. Um, it just really helps me personally sleep. Um, wearing socks to bed, believe it or not, covering your feet helps lower your body temperature, your core temperature, which helps you fall asleep faster. So wear those socks to bed. Uh, essential oils. Okay. I love my roll on essential oil has a blend of lavender in it. I put that on my wrist and the back of my neck and my belly button before bed helps sleep great. Uh, and then if you're really struggling, sometimes that whole counting sheet thing. So I do box breathing. If you've never heard of box breathing, think about your box. So you inhale for a count to four, hold for a count to four, exhale for a count to four, hold for a count to four. And you kind of just repeat that. And sure enough, you're going to find yourself sleeping. We also sleep on a grounding mat. So if you've heard of grounding or earthing, um, you can also just get outside, walk barefoot, that can help your body. It reduces cortisol levels. Inflammation is proven to help your body sleep. 
And a big one is EMFs, electromagnetic frequencies. Guys, this is huge. And we are exposed to so much EMFs on a daily basis. But think about when you're sleeping. Um, I once bought an EMF meter and I checked the outlets by my bed. It was like through the roof. So I actually have a pillowcase that blocks EMS, but you don't want to have your phone in your room. And if you do sleep with your phone or your laptop or something in your room, have it on airplane mode or have it completely off away from your bed. Cause that really, really, really disrupts your sleep. Not to mention a whole slew of other health conditions that go along with it. Um, if you are one that uses a phone in bed, maybe for reading or, um, or a Kindle or iPad, you can use your blue blocker nighttime glasses. Okay. This really helps block out all those, all the blue light, all the light. It's kind of difficult a little bit to read, but there's a lot of uh, studies that also are science that also shows that if you put these on a couple hours before bed, your sleep quality goes way through the roof. And the biggest thing is when you set your bedtime, set it and commit to it. We are committed to getting into our, our room in bed around 8 15. I know it's early, but we get up early. So it works for us you've got to commit to it. You can't get tired of watching a show. You've got to say, this is my bedtime, just like a child. This is bedtime. We're going to bed. So, and that's, I mean, of course, then I use my supplements as Ryan's going to tie in. I always take my two magnesium right before bed, my CBD oil, 30 minutes before bed, my vitamin D first thing in the morning. And I always get my greens in and Ryan's going to take you. Yeah. To okay. So let, I'm just going to do it really quick for how I like this. So I'll start with the morning. First thing I wake up is very early. I try to get the first light. So I try to let my eyes my retina get exposed to natural light as early and as fast as possible. It, start, it sort of starts to set up that sleep awake cycle, um, suppresses melatonin early, and then obviously sets me up for a day of productivity and, um, and action. So, all right, when I first get up though, I, uh, I will spend some time reading and doing some, some things before I get going. Then exercise comes, comes into play. I'm not laying out exercise supplements or anything like that today, but that's a whole different category. So once I get done my exercise, once I break my fast with food, a little bit of fat in my food, I take my vitamin D supplement. So D3, K2, fat soluble. It's involved, the vitamin D is involved in the sleep and awake cycle. I mean, they call it the sunshine vitamin. Our body makes vitamin D in response to sunlight. And it does something to do with the pineal gland in the brain where it basically tells and suppresses the melatonin se secretion early in the day. And it sets it up for, like I said, that sleep and awake cycle. And so um, circadian rhythm. Course. All right. As we go out throughout the day, I am hydrating. I'm probably, like Lisa said, at 75% hydrated with my water goals by probably 12, 12 or two o'clock, whatever. I'm just, I'm loaded. I'm heavy in the morning. Um, and then my super greens are in the day as well. I like super greens because we didn't, we're not going to go heavy into this today, but on the stress sleep connection, but the ashwagandha, okay. We have KSM 66, USDA certified organic um, ashwagandha, and it's a, it's an adaptogen. So it helps the body manage and and work with um, high loads of stress and can set you up for uh, uh, ma maintaining yourself properly throughout the day. CBD at nighttime, like Lisa talked about, but the magnesium I do slightly different. So the magnesium, I'll split the two capsules. I'll take one at lunchtime and then another right before bed. The magnesium is, is, is it's paired, it's conjugated with glycine. Now glycine is an amino acid. It's also been shown to be beneficial in the sleep cycle. Uh, so the magnesium though is a mineral by itself has an interesting biochemical kind of relationship with sleep. It also it works on the GABA receptor, which is the major inhibitory receptors in the brain that the same pathway as ambient, like prescription drugs work on. And so that basically tells the body it's in a rest. It's sort of in a the parasympathetic nervous system is, is engaged. It's the rest. It's the digest. It's the body's getting ready for sleep. And it also has a trigger for melatonin. And magnesium is involved in over 300 biochemical reactions. So certainly it's involved in a lot. And we know it is uh, involved with sleep in the brain. So that basically kind of covers the, the sleep supplements. As I'm getting ready for bed, like Lisa did not mention, though, our dinner is at least two hours prior to sleep. We really shoot for an early dinner. Those nights that we miss it, and it will happen. I mean, nobody's perfect. This isn't like, this isn't, we're not so rigid that we make ourselves crazy, right. you know? So, but trying for that two hour, at least one hour before bed, um, you know, minimal, you know, so two hours is a good goal. And then we're getting ready for bed and the blue light exposure, getting the kids to sleep, managing our stress of the day, de decompressing from the day. Yeah. All that stuff's super important. That's why the breathing techniques work too, but getting the air temperature set properly, all very, very important stuff. So Lisa had some great advice there. There's physical anatomical issues. That some people have, there's hormonal imbalances that some people have for me, like I've gotten massive amounts. I have my, my septum is deviated in multiple places. My um, 
I have a collapsed nasal passage. I mean, it's just crazy. So I have to wear like, I actually, for the people that snore and have trouble with the nasal breathing, you know, just due to whatever sports injuries, broken nose multiple times, I actually have nose vents. These are little like silicone vents you can get on Amazon, you insert the nose, can keep the airway open. They're a similar idea and concept to the clear passage of these nasal strips, right? To just kind of open the passageway. Um, I do the same thing. I work through my breathing. I don't like getting up throughout the night, so I try not to overconsume any beverages late. Alcohol, of course, like Lisa said, and not moderation very infrequently throughout the week, you know, one to two days. I'm whatever it is, whatever it is, but you're not doing a lot of it. Um, and then, yeah, I think that pretty much covers my my routine. Right. Yeah. And talk a little bit about if you want to know a little bit more about ways to track. I have my oh, my aura ring true. here that I use. Not, I don't, I'm not religious about it because I don't want to be, I don't want to be so like strict about it, but I, I have lots of check-in weeks where you really want to help perfect your sleep and your sleep cycles. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. I do wear an aura ring as well. There's the, what is it? The whoop. There is the iWatch. There's a lot of wearables and you can get a cheap wearable online, but to simplify the numbers, cause that's one thing that I got a little bit too obsessed with. And I just try to simplify it is two hours. Of your of your eight should be REM, two hours of your eight should be deep sleep, and then that remaining four hours, if you're calling it an eight hour sleep, the morning remaining four will just be a light sleep, and then assuming there's a few wake ups in the night as well, um, and I think that's just a good normal way to look at it. Two hours of REM and two hours of deep is a is a is a tough goal to hit. It's not easy. Like I'm not hitting two, and when I do, it's I look for the supplements that work the best, and I would say for sure that the magnesium has been a big player in that. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And just remember everybody's different. So you guys have to try what works for you. It's it's really about um experimenting with things. Yeah, no, it's a huge topic, guys. And I really hope I really hope this at least there's a simple takeaway message of like get seven to nine hours of sleep. Let's start there. If you're already doing that and you're and you're really trying to dial it in, listen to some of the things that Lisa said. And if you have any suggestions, please let us know. Send us an email or whatever method method right. other way of messaging. Um and if you are getting seven to nine hours, guys, but you don't wake up feeling rested, mm -hmm. you really should track your track sleep it. and see what sleep stage you're missing. Because you could really be deficient in one of those sleep stages that yep. you've got to work on. it. Because yep. if you're sleeping seven to nine, you should wake up feeling like a rock star. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. And sleep apnea, of course, we've all heard about the risks associated with sleep apnea and heart disease and all the different things and the problems with that. So I did try. I did actually try. Um, I, anyway, I tried the machine, but the machine just didn't work for me. Um, right. Oh, and there's one other thing I did mention too is uh, regular sauna use. If oh, you right. um, have access to a sauna or a mm -hmm. hot tub, uh, using one actually before bed really helps your sleep. I know um, Ryan can usually have the time to jump in the sauna in the in the evening, and he knows he notices Big that difference. his sleep is like amazing it's after so that, at the sauna. So if yeah. you have access to one, go for that as well. Um, anything coming up? Geez, so much coming up. Yeah. So what are you, what are you hinting at? So there are, I know things have been leaked out and dripped a little bit. That was not my, my doing, but yeah, there is a slow release sleep aid that we've developed. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a patch. And, um, I love it because when you go to sleep, we're not asking you to drink anything. We're not asking you to chew anything. We're not, you know, like, and so we're, what we're trying to do is put something on. It's a slow release mechanism that can help you sleep through the night. And I think you guys will really enjoy it. So that's getting closer. And another one that we're working on too, but yeah. we're not going there yet. Yeah. So other things, because sometimes, you know, you need that extra help to, to help get that quality sleep. And we are doing that for you guys. All right, guys, let us know what works for you too. Question? Uh, yeah, question. Oh yeah, I'm sure there are. Hit some up top. Q &A. Uh, coffee and comments. Not yeah, bad. please keep that caffeine early. Cut it off early. Plus, it's not good. How for early do we wake? I mean, I, yeah, I get about four thirty. Ryan's a little bit five thirty. Five five thirty. But we're also in bed at eight thirty. Okay. What's the name of the nose vent? Oh, uh, I not sure. Just type in nose vent on on um, on Amazon. There's different sizes and such too. You need to figure out which which ones work for you. Um, your wife sleeps and sleeps and is always tired. Definitely uh, track the sleep, like we said, right. and. Um, I would also get some other uh, things checked out with her doctor because again, if you're sleeping and not feeling rested. Well, yeah, too much sleep is not necessarily ideal either, right? Anything above right. nine hours a day. Nap, we didn't talk about napping. Napping can be very, very beneficial for the right person, but you're not really um, 
doing yourself many favors if you're napping late in the day and then disrupting your, your sleep. Um, yes, magnesium 100% helps with sleep. I don't like the machine either. The CPAP was really tough for me. They do make um, a full a, mask a, or a mouth, a mouth guard. Oh, that's that, true. I forgot about that. Yeah, I would talk to your dentist about that um, because there's a mouth guard that can be fitted to you that can, it's supposed to help yeah. with sleep apnea. For the sleep apnea, you can even buy, there's one on Amazon, be careful because it can cause TMJ of the jaw, but there is a mouthpiece that can, kind of keeps the jaw, the lower jaw from, from slipping down. It's, it keeps in place. It's beautiful. It works phenomenally for me. But I do wake up with jaw, jaw so, soreness. I, I can't remember the brand of the grounding mat I have. Um, but if you can email me, Lisa at livegood.com, I'll look that up and let you know. Yeah, work schedules can be really, really tough. People that have careers that get in the way of like a normal, say, night sleep or whatever it is, you really have to make tough decisions in, in your life and figure out ways to, to balance that out. Um, Especially for a lot of your travelers. Yeah. You have to constantly subjected to jet lag um super greens can be used close to bedtime i mean but oh, no. they don't need to be at all it's just about balancing your your stress it, response throughout the day so keep it keep it early i would keep super greens earlier don't mess with too much around bedtime minimize and you don't to want to drink all that fluid right so okay i think that was it yeah all right great awesome let us know, guys. We'd love to hear back from you on this topic as well. We know it's a lot of different little life hacks, and I hope you were able to take away at least one or maybe few yep. ideas and borrow some things from the things that work for us. Yeah. All right, guys. Take care, take care everybody. Have a super productive week. Bye, everybody. Bye.